In this video, we're going to talk about the symmetry elements of the octahedral point group. High symmetry point groups, like octahedral or tetrahedral, have a lot of symmetry elements. It can sometimes be difficult to identify them all. Obviously, there's the symmetry element E. The molecule exists. But let's look at some of the other symmetry elements. We'll start with the C4 rotations. There are six of them. More accurately, there are actually only three C4 axes, but these serve as rotation axes for C4-1 and C4-3. Remember, there are also C4-2 axes, but these are called C2. A C4 axis is one in which the molecule is rotated by 90 degrees. Let's put one of the C4 axes in now. A second C4 axis exists perpendicular to the first one, here. And here is the third one. The C4 axes are probably the easiest axes to identify in an octahedral point group. Next, we will look at the C3 axes. These are significantly harder to find. I recommend building a molecular model of an octahedral molecule using your model kit right now to follow along. You can pause and restart the video. There are four C3 axes, but remember that each of these is a C3-1 and a C3-2 axis for a total of eight. The easiest way to find the C3 axes is to drop your molecular model down onto a tabletop. You'll notice that the molecule sits on a tripod of atoms. Looking at the molecule from above, you'll notice three atoms touching the surface and three atoms pointing up towards you. You are looking straight down one of the C3 axes. The next challenge is to identify all four unique C3 axes. To make this easier, I'm going to put our octahedral molecule inside an imaginary cube. The central atom is at the center of the cube, and each of the coordinated atoms occupies a face of the cube. Let's add a C3 axis. Notice that the C3 axis runs through the body diagonal of the cube, cutting at the top back corner and the front right corner. This triangle indicates the tripod of atoms related by a C3 rotation. There are four body diagonals to the cube, and thus four C3 axes. We have one last set of C axes to identify. Those are the six C2 axes. Remember that these C2 axes are not the ones that are equivalent to a C4-2. Let's place one of these C2 axes now. Rotating about this axis by 180 degrees relates the two atoms circled in orange to the two atoms circled in green. To identify all six C2 axes, we will again place the molecule inside a cube. The C2 axis runs through the center of the cube, bisecting the bottom left edge and the top right edge. There are a total of six C2 axes bisecting cube edges in this way. You might need to pause the video here to inspect this and convince yourself that you can see all of the axes. Lastly, let's reorient the molecule so we can look straight down one of these C2 axes and look at the 180 degree rotation.
The next symmetry elements we will identify are the horizontal mirror planes. Remember that the term horizontal has nothing to do with the molecule's orientation in space. A horizontal mirror plane bisects the principal axis. In an octahedral molecule, there are three perpendicular principal axes. Those are the C4 axes. So here is one of the horizontal mirror planes. There are two more horizontal mirror planes for a total of three. All the other mirror planes in the octahedral point group are dihedral mirror planes. These mirror planes extend along the principal axes. Two atoms on one side of the molecule are related by reflection to two atoms on the other side of the molecule. There are two dihedral mirror planes extending along each of the three principal axes for a total of six. So that's all the mirror planes. And now let's look at the center of inversion. This one's not too difficult to see. All we're doing is pushing all points of the molecule right through the center and popping them out on the other side. The last symmetry elements that we have to look at are the improper rotations. These are rotations followed by a reflection perpendicular to the rotation. Remember that all molecules with a horizontal mirror plane, in other words, a mirror plane perpendicular to the principal axis, by default must have an improper rotation collinear with the principal axis. So our first improper rotation is really easy to find. It is the S4 and it is collinear with a C4 axis. In fact, there are three S4s collinear with the three C4 axes. There is one last set of symmetry elements to find, and those are the S6 improper rotations. There are eight of them, collinear with the C3 axes. Here, we're looking straight down the molecule sitting on a tabletop, and I'm going to demonstrate one of the S6 improper rotations, but leave a ghost behind in yellow so you can keep track of the position it previously occupied. First, we'll rotate the molecule by 60 degrees, and then we'll place the mirror plane perpendicular to that rotation. Do you see how the present position of the molecule relates by reflection through this mirror plane to the ghost that we left behind? In other words, to the previous position of the molecule. Rotation followed by reflection leaves the molecule apparently unchanged. Thank you for watching. The next video in this series finds all the symmetry elements in the tetrahedral point group.